Today, we're going to talk about sequencing batch reactors, or SBRs. The really cool thing about SBRs is that they can instantly become just about any treatment train simply by changing their programming. The secondary treatment process consists of creating the optimal environment for various bacteria to thrive and do their thing. Some of them need oxygen, some need to be in the absence of oxygen, and for some processes we need a combination of oxygen, then none, then oxygen again, well, you get the picture. Then, once everything we want to get rid of is either out of solution or has left our system as a gas, we go into a clarification step to remove all our newly non-soluble materials. Traditionally, each one of these steps is done in a separate tank. In its simplest form, this is a tank with oxygen, known as an aeration tank, followed by a clarifier, which is another tank. This can go all the way up to something like a five-stage Bardenfo system, with a tank with no oxygen, known as an anaerobic tank, then a tank with only non-elemental oxygen, known as an anoxic tank, then a tank with good old O2, an aerobic tank, another anoxic tank, and finally, another aerobic tank. All this followed by a clarifier, yet another tank. That's a lot of tanks. And you can't switch between one and the other, or anything in between without tearing down and building up more tanks. You can't even vary the retention time in any of the tanks beyond what was designed in originally if things change once the plant is built. You're pretty much stuck with what you start with. By treating in a batch process, then sequencing the various reactions, we can do anything we want in a single SBR. Let's see what this would look like in its simplest form. For a single-stage process, traditionally, we'd have an aeration tank followed by a clarifier. In an SBR, the tank would fill up initially, then air would be added for the aeration step. Then the air would stop and it would settle and decant the water off the top, which is the same thing happening in the clarifier. If we wanted to use the same single-stage plant for biological nutrient removal, well, we're out of luck we'd have to tear it down and build something that looks like this. However, in this same SBR, we can do the same thing simply by changing the programming. Walking through, the SBR tank would fill under anaerobic conditions. Then, instead of having this first anoxic step, which is fed nitrate from a recycle stream, which adds more complexity in moving parts, the SBR would skip straight to the first aerobic step by adding oxygen, then stop the oxygen, setting up an anoxic step, then back to the O2 for another aerobic step, then anoxic, then aerobic again, and finally a settle and decant step to replace the clarifier. Same treatment train, but in a single reactor. No multiple tanks, recycle lines, pumps, yard piping, and all that other complexity. And the real beauty is that the SBR can do anything in between as well, all with the same physical design. This makes it really easy for operators, as everything is pre-programmed, but they can also tweak various sequences and cycle times to really optimize their system. It's easy for engineers, as there's no guesswork on what to design. And the system is automatically ready for changes in influent conditions, and also for changes or additional effluent requirements, lessening risk and saving money long term. Now, let's take a look at each treatment step in a little bit more detail. The first step is the anoxic fill, in which flow enters the tank with low dissolved oxygen, which creates selector conditions that prevents the growth of pore settling filamentous bacteria. The next step is aerated fill where the blowers are turned on to introduce air which sets up an aerobic condition in a tank. This starts the aerobic bacteria doing their thing, which is removing organics through conversion to carbon dioxide, as well as converting soluble organics to non-soluble that can be removed in subsequent stages. This also starts the nitrification process, where the bacteria are taking the soluble ammonia, which we can't easily remove since it's soluble, and converting it to nitrate, which sets us up to get rid of it later when we convert it to nitrogen gas. Once the fill period is over, the influent valve is closed and flow is diverted to one of the other SBR tanks in the system. 
and we move on to the react step. Here, we keep the blowers on to create aerobic conditions where BOD is further removed and we continue the nitrification process. We can also cycle the air off. This creates an anoxic condition. Remember how we converted ammonia to nitrate? When we now cycle the air off, the bacteria don't have any elemental oxygen, and instead, some will utilize the oxygen attached to the nitrate, converting it to nitrite. Then remove that oxygen and convert it to nitrogen gas, which floats on out of our process, and we're free of nitrogen. We can go back and forth between anoxic and aerobic environments as much and for as long as we want, since it's a batch process. In a traditional system, you'd need a separate tank or zone for each. Not only does this cycling between aerated and unaerated conditions promote nitrogen removal, this same strategy is also ideal for biological phosphorus removal, where phosphorus accumulating bacteria uptake phosphorus, taking it out of solution, so it can be separated from the treated effluent and incorporated into the sludge blanket. Next is the settle stage, where we stop the air and just let everything, well, settle. Aeration and mixing are terminated, and all the new non-soluble materials go to the bottom, and clean water accumulates at the top. Now we have the decant stage. The effluent valve is opened, allowing the clarified effluent to enter the decanter and exit the system. An SBR can be designed to reach effluent levels of less than 10 milligrams per liter of BOD and TSS, total nitrogen of three milligrams per liter, and less than one milligram per liter of phosphorus. Finally, we have the idle or waste sludge phase. Sludge is removed from the bottom of the tank, but enough is left in there to start the biological process of the next batch. Now that we have covered the basics of SBRs, let's talk a little about Parkson's SBR, the EcoCycle. A priority for the design team at Parkson was to be able to offer our customers an array of options, rather than just having a one-size-fits-all approach to SBR design. First of all, the entire system can be designed as true batch operation where only one SBR tank is filling at any given time. Or customers can choose the Pisces Continuous Fill Sequencing Batch Reactor, which still operates in a batch mode, but allows all SBR tanks to fill simultaneously. So basically, the customer can choose between a system where the tanks fill in series or in parallel. Secondly, there are options for aeration of the SBRs. Parkson offers diffused aeration, which can be fine bubble or coarse bubble, along with our Variox jet aeration system. Fine bubble diffuser options can be either disc type or tube type, and depending on effluent requirements, may be provided with floating or submersible mixers to allow for the SBR tanks to be mixed without introducing oxygen. Since fine bubble diffusers require periodic maintenance and replacement, Parkson offers an option for a retrievable diffuser rack. The design is called the Retrievox system. This design places all the diffusers on racks located around the perimeter of the basin. When diffusers need to be replaced, the racks are lifted out of the tank, new diffusers are installed, and the unit is lowered back into place. This design allows diffuser membranes to be maintained without disrupting the normal processing of wastewater through the facility instead of taking a tank offline and draining it to gain access to the diffusers. Parkson's Variox Jet Aeration System is a popular choice for SBRs, since the jet acts as both a mixer and an aerator. Jet aeration uses a pump that pulls liquid from the SBR tank and then recirculates it back into the tank through the jet nozzles. At the same time, air from a blower is fed into the jet nozzles, creating a high-energy jet plume containing medium to fine bubbles. The beauty of this design is that the air from the blower can be varied or completely turned off, and the liquid recirculation maintains a complete mix condition in the tank. This is ideal for applications where we want to keep the tank mixed at all times, but also have the ability to create anoxic and anaerobic conditions, i.e. the nitrogen and phosphorus removal processes I mentioned earlier. The Variox jet system is constructed of FRP with stainless steel supports, so no in-basin maintenance is required, and the highly corrosion and abrasion-resistant FRP jet nozzles 
do not wear or lose efficiency over time. Parkson offers the Variox Jet Aeration System for other aeration and mixing applications, such as aerobic digesters, equalization tanks, conventional aeration basins, and oxidation ditches. Along with offering design flexibility, another priority of the SBR team at Parkson was ease of operation and maintenance of the equipment for the operators. This concept is evident in the design of Parkson's Dynacanther floating effluent decanter, where all electromechanical components are located outside of the tank. The decanter is controlled simply by opening and closing a valve located in the effluent piping outside of each SBR basin. The way the decanter works is that spring-loaded solids excluding check valves are located in the draw tube. The valves remain closed when the SBR tank is being mixed and aerated, which keeps solids from entering the decanter. When it is time to decant, an effluent control flow valve is opened and hydraulic head pressure forces the check valves open, allowing treated effluent to enter the decanter and leave the system. The draw tube is located below the water surface to keep scum and other floatables out of the decant. Once the SBR reaches the bottom water level, the effluent flow control valve closes, which stops the decant and allows the check valves to close. The major components of the decanter are manufactured of FRP and stainless steel, and none of the components require any scheduled maintenance. So far, we have talked about the different treatment steps to make up an SBR treatment cycle, and the equipment that is used inside the SBR. Now, let's talk about how all of this is coordinated. The brain of the EcoCycle SBR is the Dynaphase control system. The heart of the control system is a PLC-based operating program that constantly calculates flow rates coming into the plant and automatically adjusts cycles to optimize performance at both low flow and peak flow conditions. The control system also utilizes instrumentation such as dissolved oxygen probes, to improve the quality of the treatment while optimizing energy consumption. The control system interface is easy for operators to maneuver, and graphics displays on the interface provide a snapshot of the plant, including status of equipment, tank levels, treatment steps, and calculated flow rates. SCADA packages are available to allow for remote monitoring and control. The SBR is the treatment system that can become anything. It is the ultimate in versatility in biological treatment. Parkson has taken this a step further by creating an SBR that is completely customizable, adding versatility in design to the versatility of the SBR. Parkson's SBR team has over 100 years of combined experience with SBRs and a reputation of providing thorough, accurate, and timely responses to our customers throughout all project phases. Check out the links below to find out more information.